Hi guys, welcome again to Outlaw Eco Build. This is episode six. And after last week's boring episode about the boring but very important episode about the contents of your bag filling and how to amend the dirt, uh, we've been very busy filling those bags. We've got the walls up to roof height and we've started to remove, well, we have removed the door frames. Um, the door, uh, the doors were held open with these box forms that we talked about in an earlier episode and now the walls are up to that height and all thoroughly tampered, we can safely remove them. Uh, so here's Nick, he's removing the screws from the inside as we talked about in the, in the episode with the box frames, I think it was episode two. Uh, these box frames really need to be constructed from the inside because after the walls are complete and you need to remove them, as you can see here, you're not going to be able to access those screws or nails or whatever you use from the outside of the frame. It needs to be deconstructed from the inside. Um, so here you can see we built these like piece by piece and everything's nailed or screwed from the inside for easy removal. Um, these came out surprisingly easy this time. We had I guess we learned our lessons in the main build with the house last year because we had a little more trouble getting the box frames out of some of our windows. Um, but yeah, these came out very easily, quite straightforward, other than Nick not being able to find his drill or drill bits. Uh, this, was, this was one of the easier ones. So we took all of those out. Um, we're going to keep the wood from this, the rough wood, because this is good. they're still whole pieces. We can always use this for something else. Oh, there's Bruno. Bruno's very helpful around the building site. Very excited to get the door frames out. <laughs> um, so yeah, door frames, the box frames came out. And there's the aluminium door frame from the doors. We already bought these doors way before we started the build. So we really made these uh, box forms and the plans for the house with these windows in mind and we were quite bold this time we made those box frames with really centimeters to spare which we thought we were experienced enough to get away with but as you can see there after we installed the frame although it fit there was just a little bit deviation between the width at the top and the, the bottom of the door so when we put the doors into the door frames there was just that gap at the bottom there which of course is not going to work. So we uh, we had many discussions about this. We we brainstormed and we thought outside the box and we tried to find a way to make this work because of course those walls are not coming out now. There's no way we can open up those bags and change the size of the door frame. And we really didn't want to change the door either because we already had this one. Um, it was a second-hand door. We paid a really good price for it, but it was in super good condition. So we left it. We walked away. Um, and a little while later Nick had a um, an innovation and he realized that we can trim down those doors the door frames at the top and bottom to make a smaller door frame that the doors would still fit inside but the only problem would be and it's not really a problem it's only aesthetic but it means that the the doors would just have a little bit more of a visible overlap in the middle um, but for a door that fits and works and functions properly, this was a, a compromise we were willing to make for sure. So we got that door frame fitted, uh, cut down and screwed together and put in there. Um, and when we tried again the second time around to install the doors, uh, they fit perfectly and thank goodness uh, worked properly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a minor crisis averted. Um, and what did we do then? I guess after the doors were fitted, we fitted that door that you can see there. We've also fitted the door on the other side, which thankfully we had enough room for to fit properly. We then used uh, screws into the wooden lintel on the top to fix that. And for now, we've just got some pieces of wood supporting them around the bottom uh, because we will eventually pour a concrete floor there underneath them. Um, but because of the order in which we'll do the carb and the render and this kind of stuff on the wall, we wanted to put the door frames in before we'd actually poured the concrete step underneath there. Uh, which for all you eco fanatics is the only concrete or cement in the entire build. And probably we could use a poured earth or rammed earth floor there, but it's not going to be practical for us in this 
uh, in this project so leave all your anti-concrete comments below and I'll do my best to try and justify to you and myself uh, why we made that decision this time um, here you can see Nick's fill in the gaps in between the the bags and the door frame with expanding foam probably also a big no-no for the whole eco thing but um, sometimes needs must we are only human uh, and we find this works super well to secure the door there where as you can see we've got one um, one piece of wood in the fixed in the wall one wall anchor to fix the door to on each side um, but just for a bit of added support the uh, the expanding foam acts kind of like a glue it also fills all those gaps in between the doors so you get no drafts no bugs inside this time of year you really understand the importance of keeping the mosquitoes out so yeah that foam serving quite an important purpose for us uh, so yeah, that's doors in, door frames fixed, um, holes filled around the door. And then we moved on to uh, installing the roof beams. So we'd already put in the window, the door, lintels, and we laid a whole row of really super wet bags on top of that lintel to kind of, it acts kind of like a ring beam, I guess, when we make these super wet bags. Um, they turn really super hard and bond together really well um, and then we yeah we moved on to installing the roof beams so you can see here Nick's nailing in these rebar um, through the holes that are drilled in those wooden plates so it goes like in this order you put barbed wire and nails underneath the wood on top of the bag and then we've put one or two plates depending on the size of the beam we've used those wooden plates also to level it to make sure all the beams are at the same height not only to spread out the um, weight of the beam across the wall so you need to put each beam on top of a piece of wood like that to distribute the weight and then that piece of wood is uh, rebarred or nailed into the wall using the rebar however you want to think of that um, which is also the, the beam is then screwed to the plate so you've got the barbed wire the plate on top of the wall, the nail into the bags, the big screw through the beam into the plate and then the plate, all that together is fixed with rebar right into the wall. Those pieces of rebar are about 40, 50 centimeters long and they're going all the way down into the wall on every single beam. Here's the completed roof beams. You can see they're like, been, they've been applied, they've been placed on top of the wall and then we've placed more bags in between the beams of course with barbed wire underneath um, to fill those gaps and bring the both the top layer of bags and also the roof beams up to the same height uh, Nick's just applying the barbed wire there on top of the the plate that's securing that last beam um, and there's going to be one more bag in there there's only one or maybe two there's only one or two more bags on this course because we've um, inclined the roof that part there where Nick is is the higher side and it's lower toward the front which is kind of behind as we're looking at it there um, this is for obvious reasons we need the water to drain off the roof away from the house uh, but our plan here is to make another living roof like we did on the house last year we've learned a few things since then that hopefully we can put into practice to improve this roof um, but so yeah basically now we're gonna apply the tongue and groove wood on top of these beams so that's like the visible surface from the inside on the ceiling as we did in the house and on top of that we will place some waterproof membrane to prevent in um, condensation and on top of that some insulation some standard kind of blue foam boards uh, i think it's like a polystyrene or something and then several layers of waterproofing and our green roof we're going to plant it with succulents and next up i'm this week i'm going to start the uh, first layer of cob render which is like filling all those spaces in between the bags inside and out uh, before the final layer of lime render but stay tuned next week for all of that that's a wrap on this episode feels like we've got a lot done this week um now in the next week hopefully tomorrow i'm going to start the cob render on the inside of the house here in shade thanks to nick who's finished the tongue and groove already today um 
We've got that inside and outside here where we've got the little terrace. So I've been digging that out this week, but there's still some finishing up to do there too. Uh, but it's really beginning to look like a room now and it's completely joined to the rest of the house. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Next week I'm going to give you all the information you need to know about the recipe for the cob and yeah the best ways i found to apply that and what we've learned so far with the experience with the house and hopefully nick will have a roof on there that we can show you um as always thank you for watching please like and subscribe and if you guys have any questions if there's anything you want to know that i didn't cover already in this episode or if you have any questions at all if i can help i'd be happy to tell you unless they're related to the eco-friendliness of concrete steps or expanding foam or if they're related to the legality of our house i'm super happy to share all the information we have here with you guys on how to build these earthbag homes i think they're really wonderful in so many ways but i am not in any way qualified to advise you on building standards or planning permission or the legality of these buildings wherever you are i'm sorry about that uh, but good luck with your endeavors <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll catch you guys next week.